So yeah, you know, I mean, that's like, that's just an example of, of something you could do. You know what I mean? Wow, you sure got some cool stuff there. Yeah, I really like it. And, and you know, like I said, that, that kind of gives you an idea of something that you could do. Well, when society collapses, you know, I'm just gonna come over to your house. What? Why? Oh, because you got all the guns. But I just told you, this is an idea of something that you should get right now. You, you should go get that right now. Yeah, yeah, I, I will, I will. You know, it's just, it's just not a priority right now. Driving isn't my priority, but I own a car. No, I'm, I'm sick of saying this. You need to go buy a gun now, before things get bad. Not in eight months from now, not whatever, right now. Th that's why I'm showing you this, that's why we keep talking about this, so that you go handle it and you plan now. Look, if things get really bad, like you say, I'm just gonna come here. <sighs> Please don't. Let me get this straight. So, when things get really bad, your plan is to load up your whole family in a car and then drive over here to my house in the midst of societal breakdown. Well, yeah. And when you get here, I'm supposed to find a spot in my house for you, feed you, give you clothes, give you, you know, a, a place to stay indefinitely, hand you one of my $2,000 guns to a person who has no training, no knowledge, no safety skills, and no real idea what the hell they're doing. Well, what's wrong? I mean, you can only use one gun at a time, right? Oh, f me. Hello everyone, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense. Let's talk about giving away kit. So first of all, I apologize if you clicked on this video thinking that I was gonna give away a kit. That's not unfortunately what we're doing today. What we're talking about today is kit that you can set aside to give away to someone else. Now, when I originally heard about that concept or thought about it, I always kind of thought like, to who? Like, why are you the armory for the neighborhood? Like, that's just stupid. However, as time has gone on and as I've thought about it more, uh, I have tried to change my mind on that a little bit. We all have that one friend or maybe multiple friends who we tell, hey, you know, you should really own some basic equipment. You should have a rifle and a pistol and some supporting gear, you know, just in case things get bad or you need to defend your house or someone breaks in at night or whatever. You should have some basic gear. That's a, a basic adult skill thing. That's basic American uh, heritage stuff. You should just have that. And there's a lot of people who are like, eh, you know, I, I don't want it, I don't need it. Or the worst of the people who are like, no, I really, I really want it, I'm really excited. And they tell you that for the next like six, 12, 18, 24 months, right? They're always, they're always excited, they always really want it, but they never actually do anything to get it. Those people are the worst. Uh, but we have friends like that, right? Who are all about it. And then what do they always end the conversation with? They always end it with, well, <laughs> well, you know, if things go bad, I'm just gonna come to your house because you got all the stuff, right? Like you're some kind of Alamo that they're just gonna retreat to. So I've been thinking about that. And as society continues to fall apart and we continue to live in the, this wreckage of an empire uh, over where things might go bad, I was thinking about that. And there are going to be people that are on your side generally and that are Johnny come latelys. That's going to happen, right? And the chances are, or, or reality is, maybe I should say, you're going to need those people. You can like it, you can not like it, you can tell them to, you know, take a hike, whatever, but the more people that you have on your team is always a good thing. And so, I think it might behoove you to think about, if you're able, preparing for those people. Preparing for the Johnny come latelys who are stupid, who are not intelligent and did not think this through, had no foresight, however, can still be instrumental in your personal success and survival as things get really bad. So that's what this video is about. This video is about having some kit set aside of stuff that you can give to and train, that's the most important part, a Johnny come lately, so that they can be equipped to be an asset for you rather than just a problem. 
And that's what we're here to talk about. Now, when we talk about building giveaway kit, which I have one here that we're gonna walk through. I'm gonna take you through a spreadsheet and show you how much it costs. I think there's a lot of value here. This could also be like a first time kit or a cache kit that you wanna store away or whatever. There are multiple uses, but mainly what we're talking about here is a kit that you would give away, that you're intentionally building with the thought that someone else is gonna use it. And so I have some considerations. One is you don't want it to be too ridiculously expensive, right? I'm not gonna give some newbie idiot a $3,000, $4,000, $10,000 rifle, right? That's not happening. That's for me. You should prepare it better, right? So that, I'm not gonna give them my most expensive Gucci kit, nor do I think they deserve it because, you know, hey, I told you ahead of time. Uh, second consideration, so first consideration is cost, right? It has to be cost effective. It has to work and be functional, but it can't be so expensive that trying to store this or, or have this prepared is, is gonna bankrupt you. That's just stupid, right? Your money's better spent on other stuff. So th there's a cost balance in there. The second consideration, of course, it's kind of wrapped up in there is functionality. It's gotta work. If it doesn't work, well, that, that's kind of a non-starter, right? So it's gotta be functional. And then the third consideration is you might not necessarily even have to buy all this stuff. If you've been in this game, this game for a while, you've probably collected extra stuff that you know you just don't prefer. Yeah, I mean, I have this chest rig and I like it, but you know, I just don't prefer it. I prefer this other kind. And you might have a couple iterations of those, right? I mean, for real, let me ask you a question. How many unused holsters do you have in that drawer right now? So the chances are you have some kit that you could probably piece together a pretty effective giveaway kit. And doing that purposefully and having that set aside as a giveaway kit, I think would behoove you. So you can go piece this together probably right now uh, from extras that you've had and or if you just had to start from scratch and buy everything for a giveaway kit, how much is that gonna cost you and what's that really gonna look like? And that's what we're here to talk about. So I'm gonna go through my giveaway kit. This kit is representative that we're gonna go through. So it means it's not exactly what's on my spreadsheet. It's not, it's not the perfect cheapest giveaway kit, but it's representative and it's gonna give you an idea of how to get started. And like I said, you probably have some stuff already that you can cobble this together and make this work. So I'm gonna go through the bare bones and what we're talking about here is kit that someone wouldn't just have, right? We're not necessarily interested in shoes or boots or shirts. I hope that people have basic clothing, right? Or food or water bottles. They probably have water bottles, right? We're not interested in that stuff. We're interested in stuff that they, that's gun stuff that they're not necessarily gonna have because they were stupid and didn't listen to you. I can't emphasize enough how stupid they are. So. That's what we're gonna go through, is just that basic layout of kit that you could give someone and you could increase their effectiveness from zero to quite a bit with training. Again, can't overemphasize that. They need training on how to use it, and you're gonna have to set that side of time, but being able to equip them with a minimum amount of gear in order to make them an asset for you and not a detractor. So let's go through what that gear is, and let's go over to the tabletop. So remember that some of this stuff is representative, and you can of course make substitutions, additions, attractions at your leisure. This is really to stimulate your thinking. Uh, I was watching some Risky Krisky video and I think that was the final impetus for this video where he was talking about having a warlord mentality. So keep that in mind as we go through it and then we'll go to the spreadsheet right after this. So the first thing up of course is a rifle, okay? Uh, this is a PSA rifle in my spreadsheet here. I'll talk about we have a PSA rifle. And really you can get an upper and a lower for like under 500 bucks uh, and you're pretty good to go minus a rear sight. You can put a Romeo red dot on it. This is on a scalar works mount that I picked up from one of my buddies who was getting rid of it. Uh, we won't use that, right? You can just use the mount that comes with it, but get that Romeo red dot. I like the red dot because remember, you're giving this to someone who is half trained and is only gonna have the training that you give them. And a red dot is much, much easier to use, right? A red dot's much easier than lining up this and this, right? Can it be done? Yes, sure. This is much easier, so give them every advantage you can, right? Now, if you're like, I don't want to spend that money, I just want to put, you know, a Magpul flip-up site back here for 40 bucks and call it good, hey, I get it, I understand. I just think that this might be worth the investment, both for training and actual use, right? The other thing, of course, I have on here is a light, right? Uh, this happens to be a Surefire handheld. In my spreadsheet, I have a Streamlight handheld up here, right? And then I actually have a Inforce, here I barrel clamped it, which you can do, right? You can just put a barrel clamp on it. Uh, usually those PSA rifles come with that clamshell handguard, and I have an Inforce uh, mount that mounts to that clamshell handguard. Again, it's simpler. 
right? But if you want to go this route, you know, get a mount and a barrel clamp, you totally could. Might even be a little bit cheaper, something to keep in mind. I am assuming you have magazines. Uh, if not, you're gonna have to add that to the cost, right? But you're a good boy. You probably have 100 plus magazines already. And then just a sling, right? This is just a Magpul sling. Um, you can just attach that to that front sl swivel plate, which I took off here because I put this handguard on. Um, and then just the rear stock, right? The rear stock, the stock. Uh, and then boom, you got a sling. You're set to go, okay? So that's the rifle. That's the majority of the cost of the whole setup is the rifle. So if you're like, hey, Dylan, I have 15 rifles. Well, hey, good for you. You're ahead of the game, okay? Uh, next, medical. So you do have to have medical. That's again, we're talking about stuff that people aren't gonna buy because it's gun stuff. So I like two tourniquets, right? Again, representative. Here I have a uh, soft T wide, and then I have a cat right here, okay? But two cats is fine, and then a Dark Angel medical kit. Huge, huge fan of the Dark Angel medical kit. I don't have a medic pouch because either you can stuff it in your chest rig or stuff it in a cargo pocket or whatever, you can make that work but two tourniquets and an IFAC, and they're gonna be pretty good to go medical-wise, right? Uh, for PPE, you know, we got the uh, ears. I'm a big fan of the Howard lights, okay? Uh, because they can still hear you. Again, think about that. You're someone who's not trained. You're gonna have to tell them what to do all the time. Having electronic ear pro so they can hear you and not be shell-shocked from all the loud sounds is gonna help you a ton. Could you do it cheaper? Yes, you could not have ear pro. You could have foamies. You could get non-electronic ear pro. You can do a lot of things cheaper, but this I think is one of those things that's worth the money because they're gonna need direction from you because they don't know. And if they did know, they would have already been ahead of this, right? So electronic ear pro I think is gonna help a ton. Uh, and this little Crown Royale bag here, I just have some eye protection, right? And some extra foamies, but eye protection of some sort, right? Something that's rated. Uh, you can go to Home Depot and you can buy a protection. You can get it off Amazon, whatever. I'll have a link in the spreadsheet here that I show you in a minute. But eyes and ears are important, right? Why let them get a silly injury that completely takes them out when you can prevent that? Um, rather use this stuff than this stuff, right? So again, I think those are worth it. Now you could say, oh, I'm just gonna assume they have eyes and we can find it. Again, totally fine, it's up to you. Think, think big picture. Uh, next piece is a radio. Now this is a give or take, to be honest. I like having a radio because I like being able to stick someone at an LPOP, even if that's just in front of a window, and say, hey, watch this street for 12 hours, radio me if anything pops up. Okay, like you can do that, and having a radio is gonna greatly expand that capability. Are they gonna need a radio all the time, every time? No, but to have a couple extra radios around isn't a bad idea so that you can communicate with them, right? At least if you think of one per buddy pair, that could be helpful, right? Because you can, you can stash guys certain places for certain stuff. So I like to have extra radios just for that capability. Again, this greatly expands your ability to communicate and do stuff. So 25 bucks for a Beofang radio, I think you'll be okay. If you want to hate on the Beofangs, that's fine, whatever. Uh, this is, so the other two pieces, key pieces of kit, right? You have a chest rig. Right, so this is a condor chest rig. It's like polyester, it's not nylon, okay? So that's fair, and if you wanna hate on it, that's totally fine. But for 30 bucks to be able to store, hey, six mags, right? Up front, uh, two big GP pouches. It has these nice slip pockets back here, and then a nice map case. Man, that's hard to beat. That's hard to beat. This is not a condor design. This is based off some British design. I've done some work with this sometimes. Uh, Tack reloading can be a little bit awkward, but overall, man, it works. It works. Maybe long-term durability is gonna be an issue, but it is functional. And again, for 30 bucks, to be able to stash away, to give to someone, to say, hey, put this on, you got everything you need for the fight, that's a big deal, okay? It's, it's simple, easy supporting equipment. Now, maybe you already have some extra chest rigs and you don't need that, and that's fine, but if you're just trying to get something to be able to equip that moron friend of yours, this could be helpful, okay? And the last big key piece of gear is a ruck, right? So this is a three-day assault pack that I got off eBay. Now, first of all, it's in UCP, which is hideous. Doesn't blend with anything. It's not a camouflage pattern. We all know that, okay? So I'm gonna dye it. You can look for that video coming up, but I'll dye it some kind of brownish color um, to help with that. But this is a pretty good ruck for what I paid for it. I think I got this on eBay. I found this one cheaper for like $25, $24. I got a couple of them in one shot. Um, and that's nice, right? It's a good ruck for that money. I did end up having to buy a internal uh, frame sheet, right, off Amazon for like 12.50, which was overpriced, but adds a lot of value to it. So 
on the spreadsheet here, you'll see that I have like 100 bucks set aside for Ruck. But all in, this thing's gonna cost me like 40 bucks. Okay, so to be able to have a solid ruck that I can give away to someone, because again, you can put a chest ring on them, you can put a ruck on them, and then hey, they can carry water, food, blankets, whatever, all the other stuff, they can just stuff that in their ruck. And now they're pretty equipped to be able to do whatever it is you need them to do, right? So I like pairing an affordable solid ruck with a chest rig, because between these three key pieces, right, the ruck, the, the rifle and the chest rig, they're equipped. Now, we are gonna talk about some extra items that I found that I'm probably gonna put in this kit that'll make life better and make it easier and make them more effective, but I don't think that's necessarily necessary, right? These are all the core pieces that I think you need for this giveaway kit. So, as you think about that, or again, first time kit, cachet kit, whatever, but I'm thinking primarily of giving this away to someone who's a Johnny Come Lately, and these are the core pieces that are gonna make them effective. The other stuff that we're gonna go through right now is just helpful, nice to haves, is gonna further increase their comfort and effectiveness, but certainly not essential by any means. And you probably have a couple of these extra items that you might wanna throw in here. And you probably have some extra ideas of things to throw in, and let me know, leave a comment, cause hey, that's always helpful. Okay, my battery died, so we had to fix that. So one thing I do wanna talk about the chest rig before we move on to the other things that are gonna make your life a little bit easier is I don't really think that this chest rig can accommodate uh, AK mags. So I just wanted to point that out. It, it does work fantastic for AR mags, but for AK mags, when you get it in here, now I've taped the remainder of the uh, strap down here. I hope you can see that. But I mean, you, you can reach the buckle. I've done it. You can reach the buckle, but it's just, it's tentative. Like you're getting maybe like right here. And I just, I mean, you can make it work, but I think it's quite a stretch to get those AK mags in there. So I would tell you in general, don't, if you're, if you're buying this for an AK, I would say don't, okay? Um, can you make it work in a pinch? Yeah, sure, all right. But I just wouldn't do that. As far as 308 mags go, um, these are 20 rounders. You can fit one in there. Ooh, I could maybe, Maybe shove two in there. Oh. Yeah, but I mean, good luck getting that out and, and having fun when it's on your chest, right? Like, I mean, to draw that, and it's, ooh, even that's tough. And then if you're gonna re-index that, that's, that's gonna be tough. So you could fit a 20 round in there, no problem. You could probably fit a single 25 in here. That'd probably be doable. But as far as doubling those up, that's probably not gonna happen. So really, I consider this a dedicated AR rig, right? I mean, fitting two AR mags in here, no problem, Velcro's great, buckle's easy, I taped up the extra straps. So I would just steer you towards that. Again, if you're looking at a different weapon system or you wanna get some for your AK AR, I would probably tell you to just find a different rig. So wanted to note that. Okay. Okay, let's talk about extras that, you know, again, you probably have around, uh, I have around, that you could throw in this kit to make it more comfortable slash usable for people, right? So the first thing I got in here is a knife. I actually have two knives for whatever reason, but we're gonna go with this one. This is the uh, Mor Morkinov, Morkinery, you know, that very uh, prolific companion blade knife, right, that comes in its own little plastic sheath. And this one's actually great for this particular chest rig because it has this little clip on here. I play with this a bit. And once you shove it in this slip pocket and you clip it on back here to the remainder of the chest rig, you just, you just slide the clip over that, it actually stays pretty well. Um, and then when it's strapped in and it's compressed against your body, it actually holds pretty well. So I might buy a couple more of these to slip into that pocket so that uh, there's a dedicated blade that goes with it, right? Because these are uh, very famous field knives and people have used these for all kinds of survival, camping, whatever stuff. So it's already a tried and true knife. And to be able to add it to this kit for like 15, 16 bucks uh, might just be worth it for me. So that's something I would consider. Uh, MRE, this is a civilian MRE. I happen to have a bunch of these, so I'll probably stuff a couple MREs in here because hey, why not, it, it's beneficial to have in there, right? Especially if I'm gonna use it as a cachet or anything like that. Uh, some tape, right, always have tape. Uh, I just wrapped some tape around an old hotel key card. Uh, big fan of having tape, particularly for this backpack because it's gonna have a lot of loose straps. 
and these old bungee things are absolutely worthless. These are going to go in the trash. And to be able to have tape to tape up those straps is going to make this pack considerably more manageable. So tape is helpful to keep on hand. Uh, this is a water bottle pouch. This is just some old high speed gear water bottle pouch that I have. It's black. Uh, bought this long time ago. And uh, I might slap this on the outside of this um, because it's that universal kind of design. It'll accept any kind of Nalgene or any typical shape water bottle. I added some uh, shock cord over the top to kind of tie it down to keep water accessible. I also have some other water bottle pouches that I might mount on this exterior molly right here, right? And uh, sorry, you can't, probably can't see it super well, but there is a couple rows of molly here. So I might mount that right there. And I know I said water bottles weren't part of it, but if I could put some canteen pouches and with some canteens in here, that makes water much more accessible. And as you know, water is kind of a big deal. Uh, so to have that kind of built into the system already might behoove me and be helpful. Uh, I have a little fire starter kit uh, around, just an extra fire starter kit that I might throw in here because that's always helpful. Uh, a toothbrush. This is an old kid's toothbrush. Again, think for cleaning and maintaining the gun, right? So if you can put like an old, just take an old toothbrush or next time you change your toothbrush out, which you probably do anyway, be honest with yourself. Take that old toothbrush, stuff it in a bag, stuff it in your giveaway kit because then you can use that to keep cleaning your guns. That's a, that's a freebie. That's kind of a no-brainer. Uh, a hat, again, this is just some old 5'11 hat that I got as part of something I bought a long time ago, right? A uh, hat, keep the sun out of your eyes, keep your face from getting sunburned. That's kind of a big deal if you're going to send people outside all day. Um, this becomes a utility thing, not a fashion thing, a utility thing to be able to have that and uh, maintain their effectiveness longer outside, especially if it's summer. Uh, paint can key, I have like a million of these from Home Depot, right, because we buy and paint our house a lot. so. Um, you know, I threw this in there because again, clearing those malfunctions, etc. that's just a nice extra to have. And then the last thing I got in here is, this came with my radio, but this is the little earcom mic, right, for the radio that goes up. So you could run this inside your ear pro, um, and now you can listen to your radio on silent mode, you know, which is cool to keep it all inside your ear pro. So I'm gonna keep that in here because it just pairs with the radio and gives you more capability. That's it, that's all I have for my little possible extras. You probably have a ton of possible extras. You probably have other things that would be a good idea to throw in here, so let me know. I hope that this has been helpful, and I hope that this gives you some ideas about a building giveaway kit that isn't super expensive, that's gonna be functional when you need it, and that can hang around with you to give to your idiot friends. So let's go over to the spreadsheet here and take a look at cost for all this stuff. Okay, so I just want to come over here to the spreadsheet to break down the prices for you guys so that you can understand, hey, this really can be done under 1200 bucks. So the first thing I have in here is the rifle, right? And I highlighted that all in green. Uh, and, you know, with the rifle, you're looking at 740 So that's definitely the majority of the cost. And even in here, there are ways that you could probably get this cheaper depending on what you want to do, right? So I just have that PSA upper and lower in here because I'm a big PSA fanboy. You know, that upper includes that A2 front sight. Uh, bolt carrier group, charging handle, that kind of thing. Uh, so, you know, you have a complete rifle essentially right here, minus a rear sight. I do have the Romeo 5 in here. Now, you could not go with this uh, if you wanted, right? You, you don't necessarily need to do that. Uh, however, I'm a big fan of that because, again, new shooters, you know, not familiar with lining up sights, etc., etc. Being able to have a red dot makes life a lot easier easier and that's a pretty bomb proof site for the price that rear fr flip up site right that's just a magpole flip up site whatever sling this is just again a magpole sling you just loop it around the front sling plate and the rear stock and you're good to go uh the light this is just a polytac stream light handheld light that i'm going to put on a ring mount this is an impact weapons uh components mount and it is 60 dollars, so there probably is a cheaper way to do this However, I like this mount because it mounts directly to that clamshell handguard, and so it's just simple. Uh, you don't have to get a new handguard. You don't have to figure out some M-lock solution. You can just mount this right to the clamshell. So big fan of that just for simplicity. Again, are there cheaper ways to do it? Are there smarter ways to do it? Yeah, probably. I guess you could figure that out. Uh, that Condor chest rig, that's really easy. It's 32 bucks. The IFAC, that's a Dark Angel medical kit, so that is a little bit more expensive. However, 
it has all the right stuff. Medical equipment, in my opinion, isn't something you should skimp on. Um, if you want to risk it, right, you could get some Chicom tourniquets or whatever. But again, I'm just going to go with those North American Rescue tourniquets. UV5R radio from Baofeng, uh, you know, 25 bucks. That's pretty simple. Ruck. Okay, so in here I have $108 for the Ruck because that's what I'm assuming you would just buy some 511 tactical uh, Ruck, like a 24 hour pack. However, you know, I got that three day assault pack off eBay all in after after I'm going to diet, after buying the stiffener plate for probably around 50 bucks. Uh, so half of that. Again, the, you know, surplus is your friend on finding a solid Ruck for this kind of deal right ear pro i went with the howard light ear pro uh just because i do think that that is a big advantage there again i want them to maintain hearing and not be shell-shocked and i want them to be able to understand and listen to me so you could just do foamies right or just some kind of in-ear pro but i went with this because i want to maintain uh situational awareness and ability to hear me that's going to be super important that they can hear me eyes uh this is just some ansi rated 22 dollar eye protection so all in you know you're looking at under 1200 bucks could you do it cheaper and cut some things or change some things here yes you could uh, but i hope this gives you a good template a good starting point to understand i will have this whole spreadsheet on my website with my affiliate links so feel free to go check that out there like i said i hope that points you in the right direction as you prepare to become a warlord do brave deeds and endure